with our sun beaming radiation to Earth. For billions of years, our only protection from the damaging effects of radiation has been in the upper atmosphere. High concentrations of a gas called ozone form a natural protective covering. However, this ozone layer is fragile. If you compressed all the ozone particles at sea level, the layer would only be one-tenth of an inch thick. There is evidence that the ozone layer in the upper atmosphere is diminishing. Scientists have discovered an unpredicted huge gap over Antarctica. Over the Arctic, there's the possibility of another smaller hole. Unconfirmed measurements indicate that the ozone concentration on the rest of the planet is also diminishing. In 1974, the United States banned the use of fluorocarbons in hopes of curbing the problem. Public awareness campaigns persuaded the manufacturers of aerosol products to ban the use of fluorocarbons in sprays and use more ecological pump sprays. Many thought the problem had been solved, but findings now indicate that the ban wasn't enough. Evidence like these satellite pictures of the South Pole alerted scientists that the problem hadn't gone away. The white line around the rim is the equator. The pink area in the middle is extremely low concentrations of ozone. This image, taken in October 1986, prompted a hasty scientific expedition to the Antarctic. Satellite measurements were confirmed with ground-based tests. There is still not enough evidence to blame only synthetic compounds for the ozone depletion. Natural forces such as wind or solar activity have not been ruled out as causes of the destruction of ozone. But fluorocarbons are still suspect. Fluorocarbon sprays are still legal in most of Europe. Only the United States, Canada, Norway, Sweden, and Finland have banned their use. Fluorocarbons, also known as chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, are still used worldwide in other products. They're used under the trade name of Freon as a coolant in the manufacturer of air conditioners. They are used in styrofoam cups, containers, and packing materials. CFCs are not so dangerous when used in these modes. It's during industrial testing or leakage from a discarded refrigerator that the gas escapes into the atmosphere. CFC molecules are very stable. They can stay intact for the seven to 10 years it takes them to reach the upper atmosphere. Once above the ozone layer, the trouble begins. There, the sun's unfiltered radiation breaks down the CFCs into their elements, carbon, fluorine, and chlorine, and chlorine destroys the ozone. Computer models predict that we could lose 6.5% of our global ozone by the middle of the next century. And in only 15 years, we can expect to lose 4% over New York and Paris, 8% over higher latitudes like Norway. The depletion of the ozone layer poses many dangers to our life on Earth. Among them, skin cancer from exposure to higher concentrations of ultraviolet light. There's also evidence it could cause cataracts, retinal damage, and a suppression of the body's immune response system. Some plant growth could be stunted, lowering crop yields. Also, there's the danger of the destruction of many aquatic organisms, disturbing the entire food chain. Scientists warn that we could be upsetting the balance of a delicate life support system on Earth. United States Information Agency presents WorldNet, an international televised exchange of ideas. And now from our studios in Washington, D.C., here is your host, broadcast journalist, Maria del Carmen Sicardi. Good afternoon and welcome to WorldNet once again. Today, for audiences in Latin America and participants in Buenos Aires, Caracas, and Mexico City, we will discuss depletion of the ozone layer of our atmosphere. We don't see it or hear it, and we sometimes take it for granted. We assume that it is indestructible, but we're finding out that that is not the case. Recent attention to the destruction of the ozone layer in our atmosphere is becoming a global issue.